Hey, and welcome to a Chicago Beer Pass beer review. And we're drinking Nick's uh, favorite Christmas beer, but Indeed. in his least favorite format. You know, we haven't seen the can yet for the jelly for the jelly monk, but uh, this is Watau, Belgium, man. This is St. Bernard's Christmas Ale. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about seeing the can in your little <laughs> fat jelly monk? You know the... the he's, uh, he's less fat looking. Yeah. yeah he's, why do you got to bring his weight into it? <laughs> he does look less... Uh, less you know, chunky. You know, he's been, you know, he's been watching what he's been watching his dad. The um you know, the American cans in general are just kinda not wrapped, you know, like the they leave some of the naked can on on the finished label. It's basically a bottle label that they slap on a beer can. Uh yeah, a lot of the because this has that you know, I've talked about like the crinkliness of cans and these sleeves do that like crinkle. But this is um this looks great. And this is definitely, I want to say this is more festive than the, the, bo- the bottle. bottle. This right. is more festive than the bottle. I mean, we got fucking uh, peppermints, ornaments. We got reindeer. We got all we sorts got of shit there, on here. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, I think it was on the one of the previous episodes, Nick was saying that cor- cork and cage. When we were talking about holiday gifts. Yes. You know, like there's something about that cork and cage oh. motif that just like makes it more fun. No, I couldn't agree more. Yeah, and then um, you know, it's these styles that inspired American breweries. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's always a good time to revisit, you know, these types of beers, Trappist breweries, if you will. They're monks, you know. They pray all day. They're celibate, and their only fun is when they make chocolates and cheeses and beer to support their community. Right. Well, you they know? only do it to get paid, and you which know. is basically everyone's like. There's nothing wrong with money. You know? Right, but it's sort of like all of uh, the rest of us aren't praising praising the the good Lord for the rest of the day. Right, but we just watch TV and we like basically work to watch TV. They work to like praise the Lord. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> I feel like it's insane. insane. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you feel like a uh, Saint Bernard is like regular? Are you into it as much as Christmas? It's more of the pomp and circumstance, right? So, like, I'm into the cork. I'm into the cage. Like we talked about, I'm into the goblet that it comes in, right? I'm into those things. Well, I don't have proper glass here. <laughs> no, but it's like the beer's good. The beer's on its own. You can have it in a paper cup, and it's good. But I think it's kind of a, you know, all those things kind of play into my memory of it, yeah. right? Because I'll, I'll be, I'm reminded of, um, let me have a sip. That's not... What is that? It's very subtle, right? Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> what was I going to say? It's, uh, it reminds me of what uh, Lake Effect said. Lake Effect Clint went to Belgium. And he's like, man, if you go to some of these bars in Belgium, first of all, it's the size of Maryland. And there's almost 500 breweries. So depending on where you are in Belgium, you're not going to get beer from every single part of Belgium. Okay. You're going to get beer from that area. But then also, if the place is full and they don't have the glass for the beer, they're not serving you the beer. You know. Okay. And I thought that that was part of the charm when I'm drinking these beers. You know what I mean? I guess. But when I was in, I went to Delirium Tremens Cafe. That place is a shithole. <laughs> I was like, that was cool, but like, I'd rather drink your beer at the map room or or uh, at Hopley. At Hopley, <laughs> like this place is a literal you know, fucking. Is, is like, West Lakeview open? I'll, uh, if, if West Lakeview's open, I'll drink it there. Yeah. But <laughs> so. Instantly, though, drinking this beer, I have memories of Map Room and Hop Leaf. Like, it, I'm, like, transported, transported there. Like, yeah. I don't know what, it, I think it's just those flavors, the feelings of these beers. It is weird. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Belgian yeast, the, the, that fig note, you know, the, the kind of, the chocolate-covered cherry thing or whatever that is yeah. I'm tasting. But more importantly, it reminds you of a time where even if they got, if you're at a bar in a suburban town and, you know, all they sell is shitty IPAs on dirty draft lines, you know you can see this in a bottle and be like, I don't, it don't matter how long they've had it. If I drink it, it's going to it's gonna hit the spot. Okay. It reminds you of those kind of things, you know? Mm. Like, so. But this one... Although it's the St. Bernard's Christmas, there's nothing Christmas about the flavor. 
Right. And then also, like, it, it's not the, the bold spices. Right. Like, we had, um, what was it? War on Christmas. War on Christmas. Which was a stinker. War on Christmas hates us. Yeah. Well, um, well, War uh, on Christmas is not happening. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Jingle Balls from Spiteful, right? which was solid, right? Winter yeah. Warmer. Um, uh, the Beguile. Chris- Christmas IPA. Christmas IPA from Goose. And then, like, Christmas Ale from Beguile, yeah. And that one had Bailey's in it. But all those things had like a notable kind of spice thing going. Right. And this does not. No. I think it's just kind of like, listen, classic Belgian yeast and um, wear it. There you go. Right. Like, I don't think they're doing much else to this. Right. Uh, nine, almost 10%. That's a big, Ooh. it's a big beer just to be like, here, have this Christmas beer. I think that's the secret ingredient right there. The fact that it's so chill, but it's like bigger. None of those other beers we talked about were 10%. Yeah, like uh, we were drinking on and on on the episode uh, that we're recording today. Those taste like 13, 14% beers. Uh, 10%? Yeah. It's kind of sneaky. Uh, yeah. So maybe that's maybe that's the part of the appeal. But then also, like, how different is this from the regular St. Bernard's? That's what I'm wondering. That's why I was like, why do you appreciate this one yeah. more than, like, St. Bernard's Summer Ale? You know, I'm never, I'm rarely, I'm looking at this guy, you know, with his, with his monk gear on and his fucking hat, and I'm just like, I'm rarely this happy. And I'm just so happy but for But pull up, pull up the other picture. Okay. Like, I feel like the bottle. Oh, he's the same guy. He's just covering his bald head. I, I feel like he's a little more, no, the bottle one, I feel like he's a little more, uh, a little more round. <laughs> A little, a little bit on the, a little more on the gourmand he, he's side. He's enjoying the season more than this guy. <laughs> he's, he's a little more uh, rotund. Is that yeah, what you're they, saying? Yeah, they Brad? like updated. I feel like they updated this artwork. Brad hates fat people. That's what's going on here. No, I'm yeah. feeling like he's just not enjoying life as much <laughs> here. All right, here, here we go. Here's the guy. Yeah, app twelve. So that's the regular guy. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're saying uh, Christmas look, guy? He looks. He has way more like chin going. Like he's like stone cut chin. Um, <laughs> right. The Saint Bernardus guy is a little too thick for a uh, Christmas. Christmas Saint Bernardus is too thick for Brad. No, he's not thick uh. enough. <laughs> I guess he's uh, he's pretty close. He's a little. I can't believe I'm participating hmm. in this shit. <laughs> Um, no, he's close. He's close. <laughs> um, fun fact about <laughs> St. Bernardus. I think they said, um, you know, every 10,000 cans or bottles or so, um, he's winking in one of them. What? So, yeah. You'll find a you'll find one out of 10,000 where he's winking in the in the but picture. Can't bottles. The guy. Possible the, not cans. No, I, th- I feel like it's going to be keep going. But, yeah, in bottles is when they said it. That, How you know, many have you drank that he's now weeping? I've never seen him winking. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him wink, but they say he winks. So, hmm. yeah. Nice. I feel like we've done a, another beer pass, beer review, where we drank the bottle. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Yeah. In our, like, 30 years of doing beer pass. <laughs> it's been a long time. I've seen some old photos, and I'm like, ooh, them boys don't look like that anymore. <laughs> um. But then the old the Christmas sale for St. Bernardus is one style, but then the other seasonal stuff, it's not just one other style. Like it kinda they got a table beer and a Saison and a bell and a double and a triple. Yeah, the app the app twelve the eight, probably twelve and Right. Is there is there anything under twelve or is it six, eight, t- sometimes ten, twelve. I feel like it's six, eight, sometimes ten, twelve. Yeah. So, um yeah, it's not just like, okay, Christmas sale and then there's one other beer. there's like a series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those those Abbey beers, man. That's just nice. I don't know. Uh, there's something you want to sit by the fire with a Belgian beer like this, and just feel cozy and like homey. And I think that's why. Although I haven't been in the map room in probably like three years, uh, but like I've been to Hop Leave, and there's something comforting about. Both those places, like Map Room, they can be kind of dicks there, but mm. there's still like a hominess to the whole thing. I think it might be like the old books and the, I don't know, the, the catalogs, the natural geographics that are on like the... And then, you know, the tradition of these places, right? Like um, 
like Map Room in specific, they uh, for a long time, um, Fobab would be on a uh, Saturday night, and then Sunday would be Map Room's anniversary, like the very next right. day. You know, and Hopleaf, you know, he's a you know Michael Roper's a knight in Belgium because he sells so much Belgian beer, <laughs> right? I yeah. mean, I think you gotta pay to be a knight, but he's still a knight, <laughs> you know, from mm-hmm. the food and hospitality angle. And um, you know, we talked about Westlake View a little bit with the Cantillon stuff. I mean, but these are places that like you know, these aren't regular beer programs, and these are places that spotlighted beers like this. And we talked about Whole Foods, mm-hmm. but you know, it wasn't a common thing to just kind of carry all these old world beers. And without those places, I don't know. If you know, we would have actually been even able to enjoy it, enjoy a lot of this shit, you know. Yeah, that's why. I know we often talk about uh, new beer drinkers and the gateway to the roadblock you hit with hazy beers. It doesn't make you drink other things. So we we drank a lot of those Belgian beers because they were like banana and sweet, and then it brought you to other things. But if you just started with hazy beers. You have to, you run it backwards. Yeah, I, I think um, you bring up a good point. Even in the, think about this, you know, the, a brewery like New Belgium, <laughs> like literally is like, yo, we're Belgium, but we're like, you know, a, a, a newer interpretation of it. The American version. <laughs> of it, yeah. You know, like that's how pivotal these beers were. Like these beers had a sense of style and a sense of range that American category didn't, you know. Yeah, and then... um. I think, that's, I think I think I think that's a good point you bring but up. But the American category, the rest of the world has tried to uh, emulate those beers now because that's true. They're incredibly popular, and I don't want to see these beers go away. They're not. They're they're great beers, uh, but I don't like them as often as I may like a, a pale ale or a American lager or something like that. So it's weird. For sure. This is my first hardcore uh, Belgian that I've had all year. Damn, okay. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, cheers to the... Uh, I hope the seasonality in beer never changes because it gives us a chance to always loop this stuff yeah. at least once a year. That's what's fun, yeah. All right, that's going to do it. We got, a, we got a little more in that can. We got four more, three more cans. That'll do it. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.